Right, okay. Then let's just check this out again, just make sure everything's working fine. Right now, I think that should be okay. Right! Well, here we are with the glories of Phoenix Wright, the ace attorney himself. It's been a long time, a long time since I... I've played the original trilogy on the DS, I've played uh, the, the kind of 3DS remakes here and there, but like not re not finished the first game on it again. Um, I got up as far, I, I, like I want to try and get through it again to play the newer 3DS games. Uh, I have played up as far far as Apollo Justice, and I got through, partway through, uh, Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Ellsworth. For some reason I got stuck in a certain point when uh, uh, an investigation in that game, which has absolutely nothing to do with this trilogy, so I don't really know why I'm talking about it, but that is basically my history with Ace Attorney. But it has been so long since I played more like the first couple of cases in the first game, let alone the second and third game trilogy that I really don't remember um, a lot of what I was doing. So, you know, be prepared for a lot of terrible, terrible cases and, you know, me basically ruining Phoenix Wright's complete uh, reputation as a, uh, that he builds for himself as a decent attorney throughout this trilogy. So, you know, there's always that. We'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that they've re-released this. Um, it's out a few months now, but you know, it's a game that has always deserved more of an audience, and I am happy that uh, Capcom are giving it the chance to do so with actually making it multi-platform and adding it to several, to basically every platform under the sun, as should be done uh, across the board. Because it really is a fantastic series all round, and I love it. It's so. You know, cheers, Capcom, for that. It's very nice of you to do. Um, but yeah, right now, just hold on. I will be back in one second. And we will get this kicked off, so, you know, in enjoy the music for another, like, minute or so. Alright, hello, hello, TXG. How are you doing? Long time no see. How are things? How's life treating you?
Right. That's all that done. Right, now let's get kicking. Ugh. Ah, we'll leave it on default, I think, other than the changing the sound down. Dying? There will be no dying in this game, TXG. It's a courtroom game. Plus, Phoenix Wright's too perfect to die. Alright. I see. We've got the three games to go through. Obviously, the first one is Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Then we've got Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. Which was actually my first game that I played, from what I remember, I think? It's it's one that I had to import, actually. Or not that I imported it, but uh, my local game were selling an imported version of the thing. You know, for the days whenever it used to be fucking hard to get games. Um, especially years after uh, they'd be released. Fuck, it was actually hard to do. But anyway, whatever. Alright, so yeah, Justice for All, which... Uh, was weird playing the the um, the the import version off because just it changed a few things up compared to the European version from what I remember. Um, but yeah, um, and then trials and tribulations, which is from memory. I don't know. I think it, I think it highly emotional. No, we'll get there one day. Right, Ace Attorney. Here we go. We have episode one, the first turnabout. Nothing else to play, so, you know, sure, why not? Yes, let's play the first turnabout. I love the atmosphere. <laughs> that's, that's two of my, ma my gasps. Damn it! Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this! Love that music. I've, I've gotta find someone to pin this on! Someone like him! I'll make it look like he did it! Love that music. August 3rd, 9.47am. The District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Boy, am I nervous. Right? Can't do Maya's voice. Unsurprisingly. Oh, hiya, Chief! Ooh, I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you. And your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me! Her beforehand, Phoenix. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! My life! Everything! It's all over! Same. Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah. It's Death! Despair! Oh! I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die. Well, at least Maya my, my is, you know, straight in there with uh, the astute reading. Um, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey, hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I... I'm finished. FINISHED! I can't live in a world without her. I CAN'T! Who, who 
Who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Nick, you gotta tell me, who took my baby away? The person responsible for your girlfriend's death? The newspapers say it was you! My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Love me some Larry Butts. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. It's... it's... It's, it's, it's a motto that can be used in a lot of places in life, to be honest. You know, it's a very good phrase, a very intelligent school, clearly. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself in trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That and I owe him one, which is why I took the case, to clear his name. And that's just what I'm gonna do! Alright, August 3rd, now we've reached 10am in the district court. And we're in courtroom number two, well, you know, about time. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. Kinda wish Larry was like in every, um case, just because I like saying Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Hello, Payne. Long time no see. The, um, defense is ready, Your Honor. Ahem. Mr. Wright? This is your first trial, is it not? Yes, Your Honor. I'm um, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Th thank you, Your Honor. Poor Phoenix. Getting the condescending attitude from the judge in his first case. A terrible time. Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. I'm shaking. My sight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions answered them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Larry Butts. Defendant, well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll do fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me what's the victim's name. I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh, uh oh. No. No way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim. Of, of course, I know the victim's name. I, um, just forgot. Temporarily. I think I feel a mangering coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press the right bumper to check it at any time. Okay? Remember to check it off to do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Do do do. Cindy's autopsy. Do, do, do. Uh, RB for profiles, yeah. Just get the full name, make sure we get it right. Yeah, Larry's 23. So wait, hold on. So, uh, yeah, so Phoenix has known him his entire life. Um, Maya's 27. Chief Attorney at Faye & Co. My boss and a very good defense attorney. Larry Butts, age 23, the defendant in the case. A likable guy who has been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone, the victim in this case. A model, she lived in the apartment by herself. And Winston Payne, age 52, the prosecutor for this case. Lacks presence, generally bad at getting points across. Right, so yeah, we've got Cindy Stone. 
Um, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct! Do I get, like, a lawyer's bonus now or something? Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Poisoned, strangled, or hit with a blunt object. Well, I don't even need to check the court records for that now, do I? But we may as well have a look. Yeah, blood trauma. There we go. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. Yeah, that's... That's basically all a lawyer would need to know uh, for going into a um, murder case defense, you know? You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well, then... First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright just told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the, that object was? The murder weapon was this statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Alright, statue added to the court record. That's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the right bumper to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. Prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention, you don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Sure. Right. Uh-oh, Larry gets excited easily. This could be bad. Before I go on, I know that a lot of people have, like, had complaints over the, um, change in the art style of the game and the change in, like, just, you know, the upgrade from the old DS and, uh, it was Game Boy Advance, was it? For that, and even the old, like, PC games way back when. Um, I know people have complained about, the, like, the new sprites and whatever else, but, you know, I, I think they look fine. I, I think they do justice to the original, uh, kinda. Um, I mean, I still have the original cartridges laying around here somewhere, so I can always compare at some point. But yeah, I mean, it isn't, like, overwhelmingly off-putting from my own perspective from, like, looking at it. So yeah, anyway, Payne says, Ahem! Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? TX she says we love easy boners. What? I'm very confused. Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Julia, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. Um didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped, she was just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Never. What's it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. I meant to say to you, actually, how's the voice sounding compared to like the audio and that? It's all good? Am I coming through clearly? Um, saves me turning on the sound and that. And comparing it with the actual game volume. Um, Oh, you're right, he gets excited easily, yeah, uh, that's... Well, okay, well, if you want to go for Larry Butts and his boners, then I guess feel free. Did I read this one? I'll read it out again if I haven't already. She just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. Okay. What do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it! Lies! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to Liz, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport is added to the court record. The victim apparently arrived from Paris, home from Paris on the 30th of July, 
the day before the murder. I can't remember if the European version had that as the correct way around for us of 37 instead of 730. That is one comparison worth looking at. I'm surprised they haven't added like options to change that around for a European release. I'm gonna guess then that these are all like the Americanized versions of the game rather than um, you know what we had um, here. Eh, we'll see. We'll work through it. Mm, indeed, she appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. I mean, same. Who doesn't? Right. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! We can clearly see what kind of woman that Miss Stone was. That is so rude to call her out on that. Now, I, I call a character assassination here for the poor victim. Now, tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right? I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I? Stop him from answering, wait and see what happens. Um. Alright, well, if I select a stop him from answering, it should be a decent objection or whatever because he. Well, they're gonna. You know, he clearly didn't know this information before it was said, so it doesn't pertain to the case, so it doesn't make a difference. So him talking shit about her now would only, you know. Be a bias to the judges and jury and all that, and um, you know, whenever uh, it really doesn't make a difference in any possible motive for her death. Right. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. See, I am a lawyer. I am a good attorney. I am so good. That question is irrelevant to this case. Oof. Dude, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That cheating she dog I'm gonna die. I'm just gonna drop dead. Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yeah, it's quiet. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Okay, that's my attempt to do a gulp on mic. That did not work out too well, but... <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. He went. What do I do? Hmm. Hmm. I mean, in this case, it sounds like if I stopped him for answering, it would, um... Be like I'm trying to hide something. This seems like it would pertain to the case. I mean, I'm kind of interested in seeing stop him from answering to see what the answer is in return. We'll do that. I'll send him a signal. Oh god, this is gonna go bad. Lie! Like a dog! Um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the apartment that day. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the venom fleeing the scene of the crime! Well, that, that really upset the, uh, the, uh, the attendees in court. Like, is that actually the jury in the size or is that just the audience? It's an interesting point to think about. I don't even re fucking played through like four and a half games and I don't, I don't remember. 
Um, anyway, order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Again, Sawit. 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 I'm, I'm just going to say Sawit. I mean, I'm going to guess it's supposed to be the full pun, but it could be whatever. All right, Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper descriptions, is this correct? Oh, well, yes. Newspapers, yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. Okay, now we've got the witness testimony. Things are really getting moving. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Thinking I saw... Then I saw her lying there. A woman. Not moving. Dead. I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1pm. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. Bum, 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 bum. Right. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the vic victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Saw it used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your per... Uh, perusal. Perusal? Perusal. Perusal. We'll, we'll, we'll go for perusal. Our electricity to Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6pm on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, er, yes, Your Honor? You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination, Your Honor? For God's sake, Phoenix. Alright, right, this is it. The real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies! What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then what? The, that witness must have lied in this testimony. I, I, you know, I love how Phoenix is such a fucking dumbass. Obviously, you know, it's done to get the game moving and all that, but like, Jesus Christ. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then, once you've found the contradiction evidence, contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with the right bumper, then point out contradictions in the testimony. Kinda wish I was able to use the mic to just, like, shout objection like the old days. Right, witness's account. I was going door to door, right, okay. Right, let's press him on the few things and get more info. Isn't it a man leaving the apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. Error. Heh. <laughs> I don't know. He just seems strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad, and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. Or me in any kind of general existence. Um... The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course, what the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Bum, bum, bum. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door was open halfway, yes. I watched for a moment, but no one came to close the door. That's odd in a big city like this, I thought. I see, and what happened next? Bum, bum, bum. 
I'm thinking it's strange I looked inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see? Isn't the only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because they are there. It's the same thing. Truer words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. Why did the pain come off so quickly? So you looked into the apartment. What happened then? Then I saw her lying there, home and not moving. Dead. I'm gonna guess if I press this one, Phoenix is gonna ask, how did you know she was dead? Are you sure she was dead? Well, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? I quailed and frightened, found myself unable to go inside. So, you didn't touch anything in the apartment? Um, yes, I mean, no, nothing. Okay, what happened next? Right. Um, you thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? Police! Thought the apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, it, no, it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go into the apartment, or did you? Oh, oh, that? I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on the shelf in the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using that to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Oh, we'll skip that one. Remember the time exactly? It was 1pm. 1pm, are you certain? Yes, absolutely. Hmm, seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that she died at like, what was it, like, 10? Oh, time of death was between 4 and 5, okay. Yeah, 1 p.m. Right, doesn't that seem strange to you? Present some evidence to contradict him. Right. Present... Um, yeah. Objection! You found the body at 1pm? You're sure? Yes, it was 1pm for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Uh, his name's Frank, saw it. He should have said, frankly, you didn't see it. Right. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy knows the time of death is sometime after 4pm. There was nobody to, or er, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? There we go, we've got him sweating. Oh, that. Oh, there. Oh, I forgot about Payne's loud objection noise. Oh, that's so wonderful. This is trivial, the witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sawit? Why were you so certain that you found the body at 1pm? I, er, well, I, uh, gee, that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out the contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one and their whole story falls apart. Wait, I remember now. Would you care to give your testimony again? You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Oh, but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a tape program. That's why I thought it was 1pm. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay, well, we already have the thing about the electricity being off until 5pm, wasn't it? Messy, you heard a voice saying the time on the tape program. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right! You know what to do. I've got this one. Oh, I was feeling smart for a second. Clearly this is meant to be too easy. Right. Um...
Um. A video? Yes, that would explain why the time was wrong. True, true. Right, I think the problem lies someplace else. Um, right, are you sure the voice you heard said it was 1 p.m.? Yes, I can practically hear it now. It was quite clear. Mr. Payne has the prosecution verified this testimony. My apologies, Your Honor. I, too, have only just learned what this witness heard the time. Oh, I'm really sorry. I only just remembered it now. Right, um... Uh, I guess present the blackout record now to say that she couldn't be watching TV. I mean, I'm kind of torn on where to put it, whether to put it with the time that he said, or with this particular part of the testimony, but, you know, we'll, we'll rock with it. Objection! Hold it right there. The prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it. There, here we go. You couldn't have heard a television or a video! Yeah! I, uh, well, uh, the defense has a point. Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Sawit? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite! Ah, wait, I remember now. Mr. Sawit? The court will prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. Ah, and you seem rather distraught. My apologies, Your Honor. It, it, it must have been the shock of finding the body. Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony one more, once more, please. Right. Right here in the time. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. That must have been what I saw. You saw a clock? I guess that would explain it. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. Um... The table clock, the power wasn't there. Yeah, the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Um... The murder weapon? Yes, the table clock that you, you was used as a weapon. That's what I just said. Did you doze off in the middle of my testimony or something? Something's fishy here. Right, um... Do -do -do -do. Right, so we'll, uh, I guess, just push this as the thing. See, this is just a statue. I assume we're in the right spot. Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was this statue! No, how is this supposed to be a clock? Ah, you, you with your objections and your evidence! Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I... I saw it there, okay? There's... that's a clock! Your Honor, if I may... Yes, Mr. Payne? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock after all. Well, Mr. Wright? Oh, one second. Well, Mr. Wright, it appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with his testimony now? Um, well, yeah, because he said he fucking... ...saw it and not heard it. He changed it around again. Your Honor, there is a gaping hole in the witness's testimony. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. Clearly a contradiction. Indeed! The witness knew it wasn't a clock, because he... ...went into the apartment. You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder! Oh yeah? Prove it! Prove I went in there! 
I'll do better than that. I can prove you're the one who killed her. You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard. Order in the court. Intriguing. Please continue, Mr. Ryan. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Saw it. More like Mr. Did it, am I right? The sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable. Since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim, that voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I... I... That, that day, I never... Look, I... The clock, I heard... No, I mean, I saw... saw... Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up! I hate you! Oh, so that's, a, that's a nice head. It, it was him, I tell you! I saw him! He, he killed her, and he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Order, order in the court, I say. Your Honor, a, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. Mr. Wright! Your Honor. You claim the sound of the witness heard came from the clock. Do you have any evidence? Well, the case is writing on this. I better think it through carefully. Your Honor, the sound Mr. Saw heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... Try sounding the clock. Now sound the clock now, here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I ask the court to listen very carefully. Beep! I think it's 8.25. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker, after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Ping, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ugh. As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Saw heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit, try to talk your way out of this one. Ha! Ha ha! You forgot one thing. Uh-oh. What's he talking about now? While it may seem like the clock is running three hours slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. He's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. Mr. Wright, it seems like you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. Yes, Your Honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately, this ends the course examination of Mr. Frank Saw It. I come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal! You lawyers are all slime. I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sod. I, I mean, Chief. Listen up, Wright. Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think. But, Chief, it's over. I can't prove the clock was slow on the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Um, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Right. Right. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Wait! Maybe I can prove it. You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found evidence to support this claim? Of course. 
there is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. Right, well, I'm going to assume that the game is set in Hollywood. So instead of being three hours slow, the clock was nine hours fast because she just came home from Paris. I'm seeing as Paris is nine hours um, ahead of California and Hollywood and all that, then, you know, yeah, that would about just about sum it up. The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, this time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast. The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in their apartment was wrong. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sawit. Or should I say, Mr. Did It. He did the pun! He did it. He, I mean, he literally did it. Okay, let's just move on. I think he just died. Order! Order, I say! Well... This case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness? He... he... he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. Very well. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete a defense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts. Woo, not guilty. Yay, we did it. We did it, people. It's a true party. And with that, this court is adjourned. It turns out that Frank saw it was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day... When Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Salt let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Salt grabbed the nearest blunt object that he could find. Oh, poor Cindy. Alright, 2.32pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2, August 3rd. Ooh, I still can't believe we won! Right, good job in there! Congratulations! Thanks, Chief. I owe it all to you. Not at all. Not at all! You fought your own battles in there! It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking this happy. If she's this glad, imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over. Larry, you're supposed to be happy. What's wrong now? Oh, Nick. Don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone soon. Good, wait, no. I mean, bad, 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 bad. Larry, you're innocent. The case is closed. But, but my Cindy, Wendy's gone, man. Gone forever. Larry, she was a... Nah, never mind. Congratulations, Harry. <laughs> Harry? Yes, you. I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts, innocent. Heh, <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this, never. Let's celebrate. Dinner? Movie? My treat. Oh, no, I couldn't. Hey, I was the one who got you off the hook. Oh, hey! Here, take this. It's a present. A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Actually, I made this clock for her. I made one for her and one for me. Really? You? You made this? Well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And 
and she was just playing me for a fool! Don't that make you just want to cry? Sob! Larry? Are you so sure? Excuse me? I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right, right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Huh? Oh, yeah, right. What the heck is she talking about? I mean, come on, Phoenix, obviously, it's because she had the clock. Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made for her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever, she probably just needed the clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. Hope that made him feel a little better. Right. Hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People, too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. This is deep, deep game. Deep, hugely deep. Right. Listen, learn, grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner? On me? We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. Yeah, who doesn't love innocent butts? Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Er, yeah, part, at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? And so my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends. But I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us. Not unless you count the clock he gave Maya. I didn't know it then. But that clock was soon going to be at the centre of another incident. And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. The end. And so, we have reached the end of our first case. Is it so bad? Right. Good, we have a new episode. Oh, I didn't mean to start it. Okay, no, we'll, we'll save it. Uh, do the old save slot. Okay, not sure, but we'll start the second case. Right, we've got beeping going on. Or on I'll tell you what, we'll we'll do a case per stream. Or something like that. Yeah. Um so yeah, no, we'll leave it there. I think that was a good for a good opening. Um I'm I'm sorta of torn, I kinda of wanna go on with it. Um, we've worked at the beeping. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll see how it goes. Right, hold on. Yeah, let's go. All right, hello, this is Maya. Maya? 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 Which way do you pronounce that? Maya? Maya? I've always, I've never, I mean, I've always said Maya. So, I, I guess, I, I guess I'll call it Maya. I mean, it'd be weird to call her... Maya and Maya at the same time? Anyway, whatever, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me! Maya! What's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you? 
Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about the upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I gotcha. So what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock? Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker. And it really tells... Uh, and it tells you the time. Uh, I thought you might like it. You always like toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. No, 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 no. You know I'm only teasing. Uh, ah, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way, yes. Can you come by the office tonight say 9 to pick it up? I'll be in a pretty trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner. Something good. Like, burgers. I could really go for the good burger. Okay, okay, we'll hit the usual joint. Alright, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Right. Conversation recorded. September 5th, 9.27am. Right, September 5th, 8.57pm. Faye and Co. Law Offices. No, Miss Faye. I'll take what's mine. The papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why, I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho, ho, you are not, uh, cogniferous of my background? Gallery information is my business, you see? I, I should have been more careful. Ho, ho! My dear Miss Faye, I am so very sorry. But I am afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your eternal silence! Farewell, Miss Faye! Red, white, blue. <sighs> Poor Maya. Alright, September 5th, 9.08pm, Fanco Law Offices. So, what, that's like 11 minutes later? Uh oh, I'm late. Huh? That's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over, so we should go all, all go out for dinner. What's that smell? What? Maya! Maybe she's in her office. That's... Okay, fine, we'll move to the office then, right? Come on, right, move. That smell. Blood! Sob. Sis. Someone's there. Chief? Chief? Chief! Rip, Maya. Uh, who are you? The strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. I went back to the chief where she lay under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulder. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. Until finally she was cold. Chief, right, okay. Okay, no, it does change colour. I couldn't remember if it changed colour or not. Right, Chief. It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here, she was struck in the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker lying next to her must have been the murder weapon. Thinker added to the record. Hmm, there are some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass lights, uh, light stand lying broken in the back of the room. 
Let's get the shards out of it. Nothing else that seems like a clue here. A piece of paper. It must have fallen from Maya's hand. What could it be? A word in written in blood on this scrap of paper. Yeah? Did Maya write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store. Dated yesterday. Okay, she has the core record. I think that's enough snooping around for now. I'd better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. There's a large office building, or a large building right across from the office. The Gatewater Hotel, a nice luxurious place. Right. Oh, that's cool that they have the, um, Thing on it. Right. It's encrusted with dried blood. How ironic that this became the murder weapon. Again. It's painful to look, but I have to for Maya's sake. Looks like she was hit in the head with a blood uh, weapon. She'll be died instantly. Okay, and then glass. Lighting rig. Some shards of glass are scattered on the floor. This seems to be the remains of a glass light stand. Cheese chair. A simple, functional design. Feels pretty good to sit in, too. That's nice, Phoenix. Thanks for that. Alright, so that's everything then, right? Am I not able to... Um... Yeah, okay. Right. Let's look at the phone. Right, I'd better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws in the receiver are missing. Looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police! Please, come quick! But what was that? Someone screaming from outside the window? Aha. Uh she's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. Phone receiver is missing a few screws. I'd better not use it. Right. What's that? The ledger book. Everything is written in the chief's ultra neat handwriting. It's a small office, but it makes a good bit of money. A perfectly normal office desk. The chief had a very particular policy about office decor. Spend big on stuff the clients use, but keep your own stuff simple. Surprisingly, the chief was never good with machines. About all she used was this piece. Uh, this PC for was email. She picked up this ancient model at some garage sale for for practically nothing. All the chief's important documents are packed in here. This is where she filed her case for records and recent rulings. I'm gonna guess we've fucking looked at basically everything. girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on that sofa. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yipes! Don't scare me like that. Um, excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Fay. Maya. Fay? Maya? So Maya was writing this girl's name? Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there'd be a, be a use for evidence like this outside the courtroom. Present the receipt. Before Maya died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. But th that's my name! Why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. But why would she just write my name? Uh-oh, now I've done it. Uh-oh, here come the coppers. The police! Sounds like they're coming this way. Freeze, police! Oh, here we go. 
Oh, I love Dick Gumshoe. He is so, so much fun. Oh, I'm happy to meet him again, right? All right, I'm Detective Dick Gumshoe, see? Gumshoe, what an odd name. We received a report from the building across the way, see? Got a person saying they saw a murder. Must have been that woman I saw. Anyway, I don't want either of you moving one inch, okay? Great, just great. Uh, wait, she wouldn't have... Nah. Whoa! Excuse me? Eek. This word may here mean anything to you? Um, that... That's my name. What? The victim drew this here No, in her own blood, see? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Killer? I'm not... Case closed, you're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. But what? Maya's younger sister, Maya, was arrested on the spot. I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. Alright, September 6th, 9.07am, the detention center's visitor's room. Wow, they have per Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh. It's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning! She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, I mean, it's Maya's sister. I've got to do it right. First things first, I better get her cheered up. Yeah, of course I will. Cheer up. Really? Whoa, did I see the wrong thing? She looks sadder now. Um, what? Well, what's wrong? You don't think I can do it? No, no one could. Who would believe me? Even you, when you found me in the office. You looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No. No! I never thought... It's okay. I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I, I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court! Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha! So, he crashed and burned? He's a genius. Oh, well, thanks. I do try. One of those strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Oh, sounds like it was fun. Well, I know who to go to if I ever get into trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. Well, let, th th thanks for the confidence vote there, Maya. That's what she said! I, mean, I, I can't not say it like that, given her fucking face right now. I I'm sorry! I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch when I think of the person who did this to Maya. I know. Smile for the camera! This guard monitors was the visitor's room. He hasn't moved an inch of real pro, this guy. I right. don't know much to examine in here, anyway. Um... Remember that receipt? Y you mean the one with my name on it? Any idea why she... Absolutely none! Um... Do you trust me? Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, seeing as this uh, Maya's sister... I trust her, I guess. I trust you. Why? Don't you think I did it too? 
no, I don't. It's just a hunch, but... Art Detective thinks I did it. Okay, now we've got the glass shards. This was lying next to the chief's body. I saw a lot too. They said they thought those were the pieces of broken life stand. Yeah, that seems about right. Though I'd never heard of a glass life stand before this. I wanted to ask you about the murder weapon. Persis. Hmm, better not ask her about this now. Okay, sure, why not? Sorry, I've never seen that before. Never mind then. Was there anyone wanted to ask you? Yes? What's with that outfit? Oh, this? This is what all acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. Uh, acolytes? Like people in religious training? What is it you do? Oh, it's it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium in training. A spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Okay. Could you tell me more about the day of the murder? Yes! Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for her for an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made. How could that have been evidence in a case? Um, right, she said something about that. I remember? Do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her, her own voice? Yes. I'm pretty sure her conversation is on my cell phone. I recorded it? Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone? Let's hear it. Right. Oh, I just remembered. That detective took my cell phone. Sorry? Oh, right, of course. Yeah. Next time I see Detective Gunshu, uh, Gumshu, I will ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. Okay. So you're an acolyte. Uh, you're medium in training. That's right. The Fey family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second, you said the Fey family? So Maya was into this stuff too? Of course! She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I, I had no idea. Hmm. Wait! What? So you're a real honest-to-goodness spirit medium? With ESP and all that? Yes, in training. Well, can't you contact my spirit then? We can just ask her who killed her. I am sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. I thought that would be too easy. Um... Huh? Something the matter? Um, I was wondering, could I ask you a favor? This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And, well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? <sighs> it's what she wants. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much! I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? Great question in there, Phoenix. I, I, I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow, at ten. It's a very quick turnaround for a trial. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if this guy refuses? He told me that if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until four this afternoon. My visiting hours are almost up. I'd better hurry. Right, I'll be back. That's, that's what the day I carry on. Sorry, I know it's pretty hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. Let's see, that morning I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock that Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murderer by now. So then, when did you arrive at the office? It was right around nine. The lights were off and I could smell blood. But 
Then I find her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Right. Right, well, let's go back to the offices and see if Gumshoe's here. Get that cell phone recording just in case we need to present it to this other lawyer dude. The office is full of police officers. They are all busily searching for clues. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butts guy, aren't you? No, no. Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, I guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butts guy, he was a killer. And you're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were, um... Sure, we'll call it Detective Suede Shoes. Why not? Um, Suede Shoes, wasn't it? That's me. Don't step in my blue Suede Shoes. Wait, that's a song, pal. My name's Dick Gumshoe. Wait, that's Detective Gumshoe to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. <coughs> Don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick, get over here. Y yes, sir. B be right there. Um, ahem. You're her lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you'd better do it quick. Ooh, he thinks I'm Meyer's lawyer. Maya. Clearly, I need the f f f fucking thing. Right, whatever. Right, Maya. About Miss Faye. Did you do an autopsy? Hmm. You want to know the results, eh? Now don't you look at me like that, pal. Well, that'd be a very quick autopsy. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. Alright, alright. You can see the report, but that's all. Autopsy report out to the record. Alright, so 5th of November, or 5th of September. Fucking American dates. Alright, 5th of September at, um... 9pm... Cause single blood force trauma. Death is instantaneous. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? The city's put Prosecutor Ezra Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth? I'm sure you know what that means. You being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edgeworth. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you do know him, don't you? Of course not. Ever heard of him? Oh, and you call yourself a lawyer, pal? But four years ago, this Edgeworth guy became a prosecutor at the age of 20. Everyone says he's a genius. Surprised you don't know him? Of course I know him. I was just playing dumb. He's a cold, heartless machine. He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. There are rumors of back alley deals and forced evidence. All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost abnormal passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Right. Right, Maya's favorite pot of plants. I remember it had this uh, bizarre name no one could ever remember. Cordyline Stricta, pal. Who was that? God, I love gumshoes so much. The sky is blue, and so am I. There's that hotel right across the way. Maya's desk. Perfectly clean, as always. The only thing that's missing is Maya. Aw, oh, poor Phoenix. There's a horrendous amount of legal books here. Scarier still is that Maya probably read all of these. An old movie poster. Apparently, this was the first movie that made Maya cry when she saw it. I'll have to check out it out one of these days. I wonder what the movie's supposed to be. Right. Okay, the memo. I was wondering, did you see my FA's call, uh, cell phone? Oh, that? I have that. Do you think you could give it back? Sure, I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh, he's on to me. Um... Mm. 
I want to try and get on this good side. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me, really. So no matter. Oh no, it's just, you know, detective. Nope, I know nothing, pal. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it, like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all the little girl's sweetest, spiciest secrets. You're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh huh. Oh, here. You can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Why do you prefer Gumball TXG? It's all about Gumshoe. Alright, check the court record to hear the recorded conversation. Guess I've asked all the questions I needed to. You all done, pal? Um, yes, thank you. I'll be headed out now. Oh wait, one more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyerly ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. The witness? Yeah, Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you've sent her home already, then? Ah, you're trying to your lawyerly tricks on me now? She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So, she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should know better than to try to get a detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Okay, so we've got the conversation. Okay, right, um, uh, yeah. So. We've got that full clock. Bum, 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 bum. There was a piece of paper next to the victim, wasn't there? Yeah, the one with the killer's name written on it. Are you sure that Maya wrote it herself? Given the condition of the writing, it's hard to say if it is her writing or if it's her if it's her handwriting or not. So there's no proof that Maya wrote it. Right. There was broken glass at the crime scene, right? Hmm? Oh that. It seems like a glass stand next to the victim fell over. The glass shards are pieces of the broken sand. I was wondering, do you know anything about this? That statue? That's the murder weapon. Huh? He thinks the clock is just a statue, too. I'm starting to wish I'd never seen this thing. Yeah. Mm, what's that? Sorry, pal, but I got no info for the likes of you. Well, whatever, then. Uh, so the autopsy report... Actually, yeah, because if the death... Yeah, well, that's the thing to know. If the death was instantaneous, she wouldn't have time to write the killer's note in blood... Uh, killer's name in blood. Thanks for this. Don't mention it, pal. When it comes to dealing with lawyers, fight fair and square is our motto. I don't know how I feel seeing everything written up like this. It makes my death seem so... routine. Alright, we'll go to the law offices, and then we will go to the hotel. So, Grossberg Law Offices, according to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention running an office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Alright, so I probably have to talk to the... To the Hotel woman first, April May, or whatever you call her. Alright, table for clients, hmm, an elegant ebony case, if I'm not mistaken. That lighter is made of gold. I can eat, uh, even I can tell someone here has got money to burn. Ah, an expensive plant, a plant! No idea what kind of plant it is, but it's probably the most expensive one available. Yeah, no doubts. Um. That painting has been bugging me ever since I stepped in here. The oil paint is so thick, it's practically giving me a stuffed nose. I'm sure the price is nothing to sneeze at either, for that matter. Expensive looking mahogany bookshelves. Filled with expensive looking books? Hmm, funny. They don't look like they've ever been read. Hmm, wonderful, right? Let's look at this desk. A solid mahogany desk. 
The wood's been polished to a deep luster. Right, so that's probably it. So we may as well head over to the ho We may as well head over to the hotel. And talk to April May. Right, the Gatewater Hotel. We have definitely not a hint at Watergate. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Tee hee! I'm on self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. That's all so exciting, I can hardly contain myself. Ooh, let me go freshen up so I can look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity the lawyer that has to cross-examine this one. Right. What's that sticking out of the drawer? Oh, that screwdriver. Mm. I wonder if that's linked to the phone getting unscrewed. What was inside? Let's take a look. Hey! 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 What are you doing? No touching! Ooh, bad boy! Y you really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. Right. I mean, there's two glasses there, so... The light summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the faint cold, uh... There is the Fay and Cole office buildings, of course. You can see the inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize a face from this distance, though. A bottle and two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. Ah, still seen painting. Wait, should that be still life? Whatever, one of those is hanging on the wall. Phoenix Wright cultured as ever. The flowers are fake, as expected. I know some flowers are tulips, but that's about the extent of my floral knowledge. A simple bed. It's been recently made. Nothing eye catching here. I think we've looked at everything then. What's inside, I wonder? <coughs> Maybe later. Right, do, do, do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Ooh, observe incident. You sound just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. <laughs> um, better not encourage her. Her, you know that thing that uh, um, happened the other day? The bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it, pretty please? Let me see, um, well, dream on! If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you just... Just who exactly are you? Ooh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? No! Hey, I'm just doing my job here. Tee hee, you know you're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed this much. Um, <laughs> um, right. Can you just tell me what it is you do? Well, no. Tee and you had your little hopes of, didn't you? Oh, boy. I see there were two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Ooh, with amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives, like on television. Oh, no, not me. I'm uh, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage, Miss hmm? May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. Hmph! <laughs> oh, boy. Excuse me, but I'm a witness! Please witness, you understand? How could I possibly give you any information in good conscience, hmm? Me, the witness, is just like in the movies. 
Uh, so I literally can't ask her for anything. <sighs> right, um... Right, well, we've already looked at everything, so I guess we'll go back to the Gorsberg. Okay, well, we'll go back to Fanco and just see if anything's popped up. No, because we didn't get any further evidence, so... Okay, now we're, we'll go back to Grossberg. Hmm? Seems like Mr. Grossberg is out. Well, maybe I should just wait for him here for him to come back. <coughs> if that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of the throat I've ever heard... Aha! So, you're the one they say has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Mm, that badge on your collar? Ah, so you're a lawyer, are you now? Yes, well, yes. And what do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please, proceed. Not busy? Then how come no one can get in touch with you? Mm, something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grossberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya, Maya Faye. Ah, yes, Maya Faye. Go on. Hmm? Why the strange reaction? Uh, cha cha. I'm really busy, quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Um, ahem. Um, anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. Sorry. End of discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? That, that's some good gross bird music. How can you just refuse like that? Please tell me why you don't take the why you won't take the case. Mm, <clears throat> well, you see, it's just I'm busy. You see, but the client, my face sister. Oh, but the client is my face sister. <clears throat> Maya trusted you. She knew her sister would be in good hands. Yes, yes, of course, I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not, I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth their salt will take on this particular case. Terribly sorry, my boy. But why? I, I, I cannot say. I beg your pardon, but... Could you leave? No, I have nothing more to discuss with you. What's going on here? How did you know Maya Faye? She worked here a long time ago. Quite the apprentice, that one. Learned my techniques in the blink of an eye. She left one day, quite suddenly. She had a mission, you see. A mission? You could see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never look back, that one. That painting. That's quite a painting. Ha! You noticed! It's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The colour of the sky, the hue of the sea, the weave of the straw hat! It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale! I'm not buying! Jeez! Um, let's pretend, present the autopsy report. Very sorry, but not in the same regards to this matter. Really, he's not going to say anything about anything. Tell you what, we'll try the hotel, then we'll try the offices. Okay, okay, so we'll try the offices, just in case anything pops up. Looks 
Detective Gumshoe has gone home. The police are still keeping themselves busy in the chief's office. No one has time to talk to me. Guess I'll head out. Alright. Okay, so, yeah, back to the detention center to let Maya, Maya know that she isn't getting her lawyer. This is 3.42pm. She's got 18 minutes left to get a lawyer. Hiya. Oh, you're back! Did you find the lawyer? Um, well, what do I tell her? Well, see, just be honest. I, I really don't think you should use that guy. He, he didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. Yeah, that was all skin and bones. What really happened? You don't mean he refused to help? I see. I've been abandoned then. Right, what about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young. And I don't know where my mother is. Don't know? So she could still be alive? The women of my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual uh, power runs in our blood. But 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he... he... he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes, I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was this man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use the spirit medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved. We fought. Thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police's cons consultation with a medium had been had all been carried out in secret, of course. But the man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became the laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me, White. That was his name, my sister told me. White? Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 pm. Time's up. What should I do? Do I just leave her and go home? I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well. Kind of bad than you right now. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know, I've been there a long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. Well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right, thank you. Whew, she smiled at last. She looked like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes, and I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into the drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Uh, right, present the phone. Hey, I got your cell phone back. Oh, say, can I listen to my sister's voice? When his eyes closed, she listened to every word with such intensity. Before long, tears began to roll down her cheeks.
Right, um... Okay. Right back to the hotel then, surely, right? Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are? Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment, at your service. Oh, right. I've just come up to deliver room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using their... facilities? If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please, stay as long as you like. Enjoy! Yeah. Wait, no, hey! Why does it seem like every time I come here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to sneak around a bit! Ah, I almost forgot! Yeah! You, you can back quick! I might ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phoned. Mr. White? Interesting. Oh, right, sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White, that was the name my sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Maya and Maya's mother! Could it be a coincidence? So the screwdriver's taking out of that half-open drawer. Now that's my chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? A wiretap? Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Okay. Wiretap added. There's definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all this. I know it. Alright, I'll be using this bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean... You know what I mean. Phoenix, don't don't be going for a bottom, dude. Oh, bellboy. Still there? Hello, time to scram. Look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court? <laughs> right, to be continued. Save and yeah, sure save. We will save and get bumping on with the with the first core battle. Let's see how it goes, see how quick we can get through this. Alright, All right, September seventh, ten AM, District Court courtroom number one. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Maya Fay. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Love Edgeworth, he's with such a nice suit. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Miles Edgeworth. I'd better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant. Mr. Edgeworth, please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Defend Miss Maya Fay was at the scene of the crime. Prosecution is evidence she committed this murder, and we have a witness who saw her do it. Prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin, then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor. The prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir! My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of the mur this murder. Very well, sir. Let me use this floor map of the office to explain. Alright, the body was found by this window here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker found next to the body, sir. It was hardly... Oh, no, she was... No, it said death was instantaneous, right? In the report? It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. They're still calling it a statue? Right, floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Maya Fay. I'm gonna keep leaning towards Maya. Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. 
Hmm, Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court with this hard evidence. Okay. I'm gonna assume that we present that the death was instantaneous at some point. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Miss Maya Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay. Why, we had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm, the very moment, you say. Very well, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Cross-examine what? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. I'm going to assume that we, uh, press, right? This is going to teach us how to press. Uh, hey, May just threw something at me. What's this? When my sister couldn't find any contradictions in the witness's testimony, she would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. Yeah, I should have expected May would know some of, tr of her sister's tricks. Alright, all right, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor, I'd like to begin my cross examination. Okay. As soon as the phone call came, I rushed to the scene. Who did you say you got a call from? Hey, pal, don't play dumb, you know who. The call was from a customer at the Gatewater Hotel, right across from this crime scene. Okay, I pressed, not sure it didn't much though. Alright, please continue. There are two people there already. Uh, I don't think I need to press that, right? Okay. Are you absolutely sure it was us? Listen, pal, your dumb act will only get you so far. With her funky hippie clothes and your spiky hair, you two stand out like, like suspicious people on the crime scene! Well, he does have a point about her. She is pretty unmistakable. I should pick my points to press with a lot more care, right? Um, why, we had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Maya Faye at the very moment of the murder. Hold on just one second. Yeah? If I heard correctly, you said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did, did I say that? Me? I heard you say it. You did say it. You said it. Exactly what about the suspicious woman in Pink's claim was hard evidence? What? what? Miss May isn't suspicious and she sure isn't Pink, pal. But well, I get I guess she is Pink. That's enough. Detective Gumshoe, do you have any more solid proof other than her claims, Detective? Um hmm, I guess pressing can have its advantages. Yes. Uh. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, Your Honor, sir. There was something I should have already told you about first, Your Honor. Very well, Detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Right, so it's going to be about the note written in the blood, isn't it? And then we press, or we, we present that it was instantaneous. Right, after securing the suspect, I examined the scene of the crime with my own eyes. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. Honest, the word mayor was clearly written clearly in blood. Lab test results shows that the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found in the victim's finger. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How you like that? That's my hard evidence. All right, before we begin cross-examination, I have a question for you, detective. Your Honor. Why didn't you testify about this vital piece of evidence in the first time? Ah, uh, uh, I know, I'm, I'm real embarrassed I forgot about it, Your Honor, sir. Try to be more careful! Very well, the defense may begin its cross-examination. Um... I might press for a bit, just to get some extra gumshoe goodiness. Right. And did you find any evidence? No, no, don't jump the gun on me, pal. Just listen, I'm getting to the good part. I've got a bad feeling about this room. 
Um, just because you found it next to the body doesn't mean the victim wrote it. Oh, ho, then who did write it, smarty pants? Um, the killer, sure. The killer! Anyone can see that! Oh, you're saying the killer wrote her own name? Buddy, please! She was framed! Hold on. If that's the case, where's your evidence? Ah. I love Edgeworth. Ha! I guess that was a bit of a tall order for you. Those without evidence shouldn't open their mouths, Mr. Wright. Yeah, pal! Ah. Well, detective, tell us what was written on that memo you found. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in blood. Maya. Maya. I need to get it round in my head to say the name properly. It's Maya. Uh, right, well, not bother playing that. Lab test results showed the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's finger. I will add that. On which hand was the bloody finger, detective? The right hand. Hmm, she was right handed. Ha 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 ha, nice try. Uh oh, I guess I wasn't. It wasn't too hard to see where I was getting at there. We'll press on this and then we'll present. Detective Gumshoe, do you get a lot of cases where the victim actually write the killer, writes the killer's names? Sure, it happens all the time in books and the movies. This isn't a movie, detective. Oof. Let's talk about reality, shall we? Um, I guess I haven't heard of many cases, no. Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Uh, yeah, actually, you got a point, pal. Stop right there. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. Order! Order! That didn't go so well. That's right, what he said. That's his whole testimony. Okay, there has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it! Okay, do do do. Right, present. Autopsy death is instantaneous. Detective Gumshoe, there's one thing I want you to clarify for me here. You say that the victim, Maya Fey, wrote this note? That she was accusing the defendant, Maya Fey? That's really what you're saying? Well, what? This isn't one of those large trucks now, is it? Of course she wrote it! Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. Backwards? The victim is the only person who absolutely could not have written it. This is a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow from a blunt object. She died immediately! But... No butting your way out of this one, detective. Order! Order! The defense is a point. Somebody died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. No fucking shit. Mr. Wright, I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Um, so, yeah, this is gonna be... Because Gumshoe earlier on said that the f uh, cause of death was ble uh, bleeding out from the injury, right? So I'm gonna guess it's gonna change to that. I I never noticed that before the last time I played like fucking a million years ago that there was already that bit of a contradiction to the autopsy report put out there. It's the day after the murder. The prosecution's office point being the autopsy report is outdated, Your Honor. What? A second autopsy was performed yesterday at my request. Death was almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there was a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No way! Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write, Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth. I 
should have known you'd have something up your sleeve. Why, Mr. Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? You're a sham, Edward. This detective's a sham. I'm a sham. Ah, uh, we'll call Edgeworth a sham. Why not? Mr. Edgeworth, I've heard there's nothing you won't do to get your verdict. What reason could you possibly have to, have to request a second autopsy report? Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. No matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this report is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Understood. The court accepts the evidence. Nice. Well, Your Honor, the evidence strongly suggests that the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes. Darn, this isn't good. The prosecution would like to call us next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes. Right, let the witness, Miss April May, take the stand. Exactly what part of her is innocent. Phoenix ain't wrong there. Witness, your name, please. April May, at your service, wink. Order and introduction should not require any reaction from the crowd. The witness will refrain from wanton winking. Ah, oh, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every man in this courtroom. Tell us where you were on the night of September 5th when the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. Tee hee. I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fan Cole offices. Hmm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. It was like nine at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was the mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. Then the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end, that's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy wink. She's got really jiggly boobs. Right, um, well, Your Honor, I see. Um,. It is a remarkably solid testimony. I don't see a need to trouble the witness any. Wait, Your Honor. Yes, Mr. Wright? What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness's testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? For God's sake. Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Maya Fay's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, how dare you! Well, Mr. Wright, will you cross-examine the witness? Yes, of course. Right. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. Just have some weakness. Very well, you may begin your cross-examination. It was like nine at right. Okay, yeah, we already went through that. Actually, yeah, the, um... Where's the thing about her slumping body against the, with the window? I was gonna fucking present against that. She dodged, dodged what? Well, the attack. Right, please continue your testimony, right? Um... How did you know it was my client? Ah, well, I... Gee, first of all, she had a girl's physique. And and secondly, she was she was small. 
Who else could it be but her? She has a point. Um. Hold on a minute. That testimony stinks. Oh, what? Miss May, I'm willing to bet that. Did you really see the defendant at all? Right, Mr. Wright, what's the meaning of this? Yes, what is the meaning? Somebody tell me, because I'm clueless about this. I mean... Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, my, uh, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis except her. And I'm no expert in fashion, and her hairdo looks uh, far from normal to me. However, the witness's testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, Your Honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss May? Roar! What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. <coughs> Excuse me. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May. I would like to remind you to please omit nothing in your testimony. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'll be a good girl. I promise. Wink. Your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. Right, let's add this fucking testimony. Right, I did see everything I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. Then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That that clock. Um, the kind of statue clock? The thinker, I think? Well, does the accuracy of my report not start you? Tee hee. I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross-examination. Alright, let's press on the clock, I guess. Seeing as the whole thing is that, um... Okay, right. Well, uh, a clock, right? I think, or I think. A clock? Didn't this come up in another testimony recently? Well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. No, but I have a feeling I'm onto something there. Um, I guess present this, seeing as it's no longer a clock. I know it doesn't say it in the report, but like we already know. Um, Objection. ah, sure, go for it. Miss May, what you said just now was quite revealing. Revealing? Ooh, you'd like that, wouldn't you, naughty Mr. Lawyer? You just said that this statue of the thinker was a clock. But there's no way of knowing that by just looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too. And he was found guilty of murder. Order! Order! Miss May, can you explain how you knew this was a clock? Ooh. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes, yes, of course. You will withdraw your question, Mr. Wright. But questions are all I have, Your Honor. And as you may recall, I've caught murderers with these questions before. Well, only once. Objection sustained. You may continue to question the witness. Oof, that was close. If you stopped me there, the trial would have been over. Huh? What? So, what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question. How did you know it was a clock? What? Th that's... Because I heard it? 
Yes, I heard it. Say the time. So, you've been to the office. Is it Fanko? No, hey, I, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room. Hee <laughs> hee. The office of Fanko, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could easily have heard the clock. Well, Mr. Wright, are you satisfied? No, Your Honor. I can't give up now. I'm not satisfied because... I mean, we'll say it couldn't have wrong. Your Honor, members of the court. It is inconceivable that the clock in question rang. It's empty. That clock is missing its clockwork. How could you possibly just take a look right now? Oh! See anything interesting, Your Honor? It is as the defense says. This clock is missing its clockwork. It's quite empty. Mr. Wright, would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? It is as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. God, I hope she says who you calling fat. F fat? Yeah, see. Kind of works. Well, Miss May. Quite a show you've put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew the clock was empty? Somehow, he knew! I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there's no contradiction. Mm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been her might have been emptied after she heard it. That is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Oh, ho impossible, of course. I have proof. What? Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... Do do do... Phone record. Take a look at this. Mm, that's a very cute cell phone. Ooh, hoo, I, you have a girly phone. But wait, wait, this isn't my phone. Listen, this is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. A recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order! Order! Defendant's cell phone? This th this wasn't brought to my attention. Perhaps Detective Gumshoe overlooked it? Mm, grumble. Good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. Alright, so you just want me to hold on to the thinker for you then, if you could. Uh, I should probably tell you the clock isn't talking right now, huh? It's not working? That's lame. I had to take the clockwork out, sorry. Right, September 5th, 9.27am. Your Honor, I think this makes it clear. The clockwork was already gone by the time uh, this was recorded. Which was well before the witness even arrived at our hotel. Well, Miss May, would you care to explain this to the court? Just how did you know that the weapon was a clock? Well, well, isn't it obvious? I saw that clock before. Um, what store was that again? I, I go to so many. Oops, I forgot. Wink. So it must have seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes, for God's sake. Let's claim she's seen it before, but this directly contradicts a piece of evidence already submitted to this court. Well then, let's see it. Please produce this evidence that will prove the witness had not seen the clock before. It's simple. This clock was never in any store. Ever. What? A friend of mine made that clock. 
Only two exist in the world. And the one that isn't here is in police custody. I impossible! Everything is sold in stores! Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. A phoenix sharp tongue. Oh, excuse is not on sale today? The titties have become angry. What's it to you, porcupine head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Heh. <laughs> oh? Oh, 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 S Silly me. Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. Tee hee. <laughs> Wink. This is scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? Oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. I say from May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... You had heard about it. The witness had never held the clock in her hand. However, she had heard that it was a clock. She heard? That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Well, this is interesting. Let's see it, then. Show me evidence proving that the witness had heard the murder weapon was a clock. A wiretap. Have a look at this. Ah, ooh, that, <laughs> I found this in Miss May's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May. You were tapping the victim, Miss Maya Faye's phone, were you not? Oh, oh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that it is. Objection overruled. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was tapping her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said on the phone that the weapon was a clock is... In the phone call. I present the defendant's cell phone. Yes, we've seen that. Listen once more to the conversation between the defendant and the victim. Maya, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Well, actually, there's something I want you to hold on to for me. Again, wasn't this time. It's a clock. It's made to look like that statue to thinker, and it tells you the time. It's April, May. You used a wiretap to listen to this conversation. That's how you knew the thinker was a clock. Am I wrong? I... I... Your Honor, this is ridiculous! Your Honor, look at the witness's face! Doesn't she seem amused to you? The defense demands an answer. La, la. Witness, answer the question. Did you tap our phone? Miss May! Shut up, all of you! What gives you the right to talk to me like that? You, you lawyer! It's no fair, all of you g g ganging up on me like that. Oh, so I'm the bad girl, is that it? Is that it? Uh, uh, hey. <laughs> that did it. The court's seen the real Miss April May now. Now to deal the final blow. By the wiretap. Why did you tap her phone? Answer the question. Do I have to? 
Isn't this a murder trial? Isn't Tiffany tapping or irrelevant? Gosh, she's saying exactly what Edgeworth wants her to say. Miss May, you were tapping the victim's phone. I hardly call that irrelevant. But this court does not condone the defense's tone of voice. He has a point. Well, Miss May, do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you tapped her phone? Ha, I'd like to see her pull that off. Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking I'd like to see her pull that off, weren't you? Damn, she is good. Well, you're not the first man who's thought that. And of course, I can. And will. You can't be serious. No way. Way, I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hmph. Okay, so the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bellboy. Room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee, you know? Like normal coffee, but cold. If you don't drink it quick, the ice melts and then you have regular cold coffee. Ice coffee? Think I'm making this up? Ask the bellboy. Wink. Ergo, the witness was not on the scene at the time of the murder. So where does that leave us? It is my great displeasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been tapping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing on the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant Maya Faye commit murder. No! They're going to let her just walk away? There is no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well, come on, think of something. Alright, the defense would like to call the hotel bellboy as a witness. There's something suspicious here, and I'm going to get to the bottom of it. I think you've sunken quite low enough already. I object to calling the bellboy. Why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretapping had nothing to do with the killing? However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine the bellboy, then you will recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty for Miss May Fay. That is my condition. What? I better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. Otherwise, May will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? Accept it. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood, I accept your condition. <laughs> Fool, you fell right into my trap. Uh oh. Uh, wait. Very well. Court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to, te to testify. He certainly does look like a bellboy. I like the fact that he came with the tray and everything to amazing. Yes, sir, I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be of service. That tea set looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I'm the head bellboy of the Fine Gatewood Hotel in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after eight in the evening from our guest, Miss May. She asked for ice cold coffee to be brought to her at nine on the dot, sir. I brought it to her at precisely the requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to her guest, Miss May herself. I see. The defense may begin this cross examination. Right. Right, this is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder now, Maya will be finished forever. Right. Okay, receives a call at eight. Nine on the dot, you say? 
Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a TV a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. Nine, the time of the murder. Yeah, I brought it to her precisely... Uh, precisely the request of time, of course. Precisely nine, then? Precisely, exactly. And most definitely, sir, 9pm. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent I brought it then. Uh, oh, bellboy, teehee, I'd like that iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on her door at the crack of nine, sir. <clears throat> Why would she be so particular about the time? I delivered the iced coffee to her guest. Miss May herself. You sure it was Miss April May herself? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely, sir. It's an endearing mannerism of mine. How come you're so very certain? Well, when I brought uh, the room service, sir, she, she, the guest, sir, she favored me with a, a, a embarrasser, sir. Embarrasser? Is that French for embrace? Or embrasser, is that? It's French for kiss, sir, but not the French. Not a French kiss, sir. More of a peck on the cheek. Uh. Clearly, I can't read whenever I called it embarrasser at first. Why would she have done that? I believe perhaps she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think her Miss May was out of the song. I wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Sissex, finally you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you'll end this rather tedious cross-examination here. Hmm, it was a bit tedious, so witness may leave the stand. I can't this little sound. Can I write protest? Wait, please wait! Yes, does the defense have something to add? One last question, let me ask one last question. Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Elgeworth. All right, Mr. Wright, I'll give you one more question, that's all. Okay, this is really it. Now, this is my last chance. What do I ask him about? Tell me again about the room service. Again, sir? Oh, for God's sake. $18 is a charge, I see. $18? Doesn't that seem a bit expensive? Yes, well, iced coffee for two, you know? I mean, don't skimp on the ice, sir. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, oh, er, uh, rather, quite. Bellboy, tell us the truth now. Was someone else staying in Miss May's room? I object. That was objectionable. Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? Well, sir, you were... you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. Ah, uh, yes, quite. Indeed. It was the uh, good uh, barista, uh, barrister over there, Mr. Edgeworth, who... He asked me not to mention if it was, wasn't specifically asked, sir. Oof. You fool! I've done it. I've won. Don't go so ahead of yourself, Phoenix. Miss Avery made checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see what uh, that man in the room. That's right, sir. Mm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgeworth? And who, Mr. Wright? Who is this other person? Simple, it was... And it checked in with Miss May. Your Honor, as has been previously revealed, Miss April May was tapping the victim's phone. Yet Miss May herself was an alibi at the time of the murder. 
However, that does not clear the man that was with her. But seeing as she was an alibi at the time of the murder, um... Like, I would have thought I would have been able to present that she couldn't have seen the murder if she was busy collecting her tea. I don't know. Whatever. The bellboy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. Like, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late! Too late? I suppose you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Oof! Upstart! Amateur! These accusations are ludicrous! Right. Enough! The court acknowledges the defense's argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. Am I understood? Yes, gasp. Yes, Your Honor. That is all t today for the trial of Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. Right, September 7th, 2.24pm, District Court, Defendant Lobby 1. Mr. Wright, you were amazing in there. Really? I think it might be your uh, newest fun. Oh, I was just doing my job, you know? <laughs> then again, that older attorney was pretty cool, too. Huh? That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips, it sent shivers up my spine. If you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Oh, I, I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May. He's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. I'm counting on you! I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. I don't know how much good this will do me at all now. Well, seeing as the only thing says that he ran to the right, I'm going to guess that the other guy is going to say he was in the room and that she ran to the left. But the only reason she ran to the left is because he was facing her and killed her. I really don't remember any of this case, so uh, that's not like recalling from the past. But you know, that's you know, let's just, let's just call it an early, you know, an, an early guess. It's, it's about what. Well, Eight years since I played this, I think. So, you know, I, I forget the exact breakdown of each case. Just more remember the individual characters. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. Maya doesn't belong in the detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. Right, to be continued. Right, I'm gonna call it there for the night. I'm gonna let it save, and, um. Yeah. That's, that's that. So we, we will catch up with the rest of episode 2, Turnabout Sisters, um, soonish. Uh, I don't know about tomorrow now. I, I actually am hoping to possibly stream the launch of Apex Legends Season 2 tomorrow, um, with a bit of luck. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed with that, but you know, I, 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 I do plan on getting back to this soon. I, I, I don't want to fall out of the, of the enjoyment of... Phoenix Wright, and while I'm in it, and on a roll, especially for the harder cases to come, and moving on to the second and third games in the trilogy. But yeah, so that is it. So yeah, thanks for joining in. It's 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 been fun. Um, clearly, you know, I, I, could, I could really be doing working on my accents and voices, but you know, like I'll never be a voice actor. But you know, yeah, hopefully, hopefully it's been enjoyable to watch anyway. Right, cheers. Have a good evening, thanks for joining in, and yeah, it's been cool.